Hello there, and welcome to our show, Gods10.com. I am Susie, and my husband, Philip Clevmon here, and we are going to share with you the Ten Commandments today. I wanted to let you know that we're, what we're sharing is God's Word and how it can affect and how you can join us in this ministry. Well, we want to thank you. It's a little rainy here in California today, but our whole purpose is to... Uh, uh, magnify the Lord. In 34.3 in the Psalms, it says, Come, uh, magnify the Lord with us, and let us exalt His precious holy name together. So we got into this ministry in 7705. It's called Gods10.com and Gods10.net. So if you get a chance, go to our website. And uh, our purpose is to blanket not only America, but every community, uh, every little city, uh, every little village that will magnify the Lord and find one person. We know that when we display God's word, uh, something's got to happen. In the 20th Psalm, the fifth verse, it simply goes on to say, uh, in the name of our God, we'll put up our banners. In 60th Psalm, the fourth verse, uh, God has given a banner to them that fear him that it might be displayed because of the truth. So our purpose is to, we have magnets and we put up banners that go from like two by four feet all the way up to 20 by 40 feet. And we have little magnets like this that are 12 by uh, 18 inches that we put on vehicles. We have little ones like uh, everybody that puts this on their vehicle, thousands of people will see it a month. And we do believe that in God we trust in Jesus Christ we say, we're saved. And the one that I love that my wife made is Jesus, the peace you're missing. My peace I give unto you, let not your heart be troubled. So our purpose is to, is to get it out there and let people see it. Uh, let our light shine that they can see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Uh, that they can see our good works. Uh, so Susie and I have started this in 7705 and here we are today. Uh, we were privileged to meet uh, a Dr. Narsrallah uh, here a couple of years, uh, months ago, and he has invited us down here. And the work that he's doing, he just spent a month over in Taiwan. And this is our, uh, our purpose, is to come alongside Joseph and mag magnify Jesus' name and put banners all over Taiwan. We know that God's word isn't going to come back void. So this is what we're trying to do. And Susie, uh, what do you think of this? Well, we didn't norm, uh, first start out with uh, banners and magnets. We actually started out with signs. And the first one that we pr put on our property was actually a wooden sign. It was uh, inscribed, inscribed in, in wood, and uh, we never thought anything of it. We just wanted the Ten Commandments or God's Word on our property. And that, uh, God put a vision in my husband's heart to go and uh, have the Word of God displayed on every church and every building. Um, and you're probably asking us, why? The Ten Commandments. Well, Philip, why did we start with the Ten Commandments? Because it's the foundation that leads us to Christ. Well, one and thing I've found, but, you know, it's just, I've always, I grew up in a, a Christian family in North Dakota, and I love the Lord. And, you know, my mom and dad were always praying for me, and not everybody has a praying mom and dad. And, you know, when I got in trouble and uh, I didn't have any money, I didn't have anybody to reach out to, uh, Mom, can you send me some money? Well, I ended up paying them back plus interest, and I was just so thankful for my mom and dad and for their prayers. And so when we started this Ten Commandments, uh, you know, Church we moved up to Montana on our ranch, and we, my uncle died, and we went over there, and we saw a Ten Commandment in North Dakota. And we said, well, we'll just put one on our ranch. And so that's what we did. And right after that miracle started happening, and uh, what, Susie? Judge Roy Moore. Oh, yeah, Judge Roy Moore back in Alabama. We just met him here a year or so ago, but uh, before that, he had sent me a book. And we were really, really impressed by, by uh, Roy Moore. When I read about him, he was a Supreme Court justice in Alabama, and he stood up for righteousness. He stood up for God's word, and, and, uh, and they fired him as the chief justice. And then he got elected again, and then they, they just fried him for something that supposedly happened 40 years ago, and it was just, it was terrible what they've done. And you know, today we can't even get people to agree on uh, if it's a beautiful day. So our purpose is, is to get the word out there. You know, Jesus has said he's come to seek and save those that are lost. And I know one thing, as I go through my journey in life, and I'm coming to the end, I know that God said he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake us. And, and when I see that what's happening in the world, uh, it's getting to the point that where uh, 
People are hurting. We're, we're having over a thousand suicides a week in America, and it breaks my heart. And these people need hope, and that hope is at the foot of the cross where Jesus will set them free. You know, we have a little story we're going to tell about Reno, Nevada. I was in Reno, Nevada here uh, uh, two years ago, January 15th, which is two years ago in almost two months, or a month, and I was sitting there. Do you have that red uh, pickup, guys? And I'm sitting at the lake up in Reno, Nevada. If any, anybody's ever been there, it's Virginia Lake. And I'm sitting there, uh, and I have my little wolf with me, and uh, it's about 19 degrees, but it's a beautiful day up in Reno, Nevada. And uh, I'm sitting there. Do you have that red truck, guys? Come, keep going. And so I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, my wolf, the back windows are down, and... Uh, and the wolf is watching the people walk their dogs and such a sweet little wolf. And all of a sudden, I got a knock on my door. That's why I know this works. My vehicle probably had 60, 70 magnets on it, proclaiming Jesus, the Word of God, the Ten Commandments. And all of a sudden, I get a... And I turn, and here's this kid with a red hoodie. And I roll down my window. And he said these five words to me. He said, would you pray for me? And I said, what did you say? He says, I got up this morning, and I don't, want to, I don't know if I want to live anymore. I don't know if I can make it through the day. I don't want to live. And, and I left my house this morning. I said, God, if you're real, give me a sign today. And I'm walking by your pickup, your red pickup. And I saw it. And I saw the word of God, and God spoke to me just like I'm speaking to you now. He said, go ask that man in the red pickup to pray for you. And he was heartbroken. Well, the, here, this kid is he's, he's, he's heartbroken. And now I'm almost heartbroken. I take off my hat and I put my hand out the window. I said, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, you alone heal the broken in heart. You bindeth up the wounds, Father. You said when we draw nigh to you, you'll draw nigh to us. And when we seek you and we seek you with our whole heart, we'll be found of you. This kid is weeping. I've never seen anything like it in my life. He's weeping. I said, Michael, the God from heaven, he heard your plea and your cry, and he attended to it. Don't forsake that, Michael. When you get home tonight, get on your knees and, and repent, because the Bible says, I tell you, nay, except you repent, you're all going to perish, Luke 3, 9. No, I'm sorry, that's Luke 13, 3 and 5. And this kid is just weeping, and my heart is broken. And I said, Michael, when you give your life 100% to Jesus, your life will change 100%. When you get on your knees and you repent before a holy God and you forgive, every, every, forgive everybody from the bottom of your heart so you can be forgiven, the kid is weeping. Thirteen minutes later, my wife, my wolf and I watched that young man walk away until he was out of sight. And we never saw him again. Several things to this. Number one, had I not allowed myself to be a vessel for the master's use, this would have never happened. Number two, the Bible says in the 55th chapter of Isaiah, my word will never, my word will never return to me void, but it'll accomplish what I please and it'll prosper where I send that word. So I know that when people are hurting and they're down in their luck and they think there's no one to care, can you imagine a thousand people a week committing suicide because they don't have any hope? The body, you've heard that say of old, you should love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I tell you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for those that despitefully use you, that you might be called the children of God. For God makes his sun to shine on the evil and the good, and he makes it to rain on the just and the unjust. We need to be merciful as our Father in heaven is. Never saw the kid again. But I'm asking you, you have a gift. Use it for the glory of God. Ask God what you could do. You can pass out a track. One day the day of judgment's going to come. I know that the 21st chapter, or the 20th chapter of Revelations, number 12, it says, I saw the dead. This is John the Revelator. He said, I saw the dead, great and small. They were standing before God Almighty. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And every one of those people were judged according to what was written in those books, according to their works. And whosoever was not found in the book of life 
was cast into the lake of fire. Do you know somebody that's hurting? Jesus said he's come to seek and save those that are lost. God Almighty in 635 in Luke, he says he's kind to the unthankful and to the evil. Therefore, be merciful as our Father in heaven is merciful. 145.9 in the Psalms. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all of his works. He loves his creation. 26.10 in the Proverbs. The great God that formed everything, he rewardeth the fool and rewardeth the transgressor. He doesn't reward people for their evil, but even evil people can do good. So I'm telling you, get right with God. Get into the word of God. Get into that living bread that came down from heaven. How can you say you love him and not want to spend any time with him? So our purpose, Susie and I, is to get out there. We have these little magnets that we put on vehicles. Uh, this one right here simply is, uh, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You've got God will supply all your riches according to his glory in Christ Jesus. But that red pickup was something I'll never forget the rest of my life. And I still pray for that kid. His name was Michael. So what we're trying to do is get encourage people. You've got a gift. I don't care what you do. Tell someone about Jesus. And so Susie... Uh, so this is just a, another vehicle or a way for you to share Jesus with people because you might not be uh, the most outspoken person or you might not want to wear a t-shirt. But look, if you can pass one of these out, it's just like a tract. It's God's word and it won't return void. And the testimony that Philip gave is just one of many that we've heard and we've seen and we've experienced that people have received God's word and weeped and, cr and cried and been touched by the word of God. That the, and they, we know that God's word won't return void. But one of the one of the testimonies that we remember is the one where Philip gave this to a young man that was at a at a gas station. And uh, Philip saw that he was hurting, and he wanted to. Philip gave him a magnet just like this. And tell me, Philip. Years later, he called you back and, and told you what happened in his life. Is that right? Well, the, you know, it's funny because you never know if God's word isn't going to come uh, tr uh, back void, then you don't know what it is. We're planting, we're watering, but I'm going to tell you God is faithful to give the increase. Again, if Jesus said, if I'm lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So if he'll draw all men, he's using us as vehicles for the master's use. We're vessels. We're ambassadors for Christ, and we're going to get into that in some of our studies. The Bible is so, so, there's so many nuggets and gems in there, and we need to share it with each other, to encourage each other. We're not here to beat each other down. So anyway, I gave this magnet to this young man, and about uh, two and a half, three years later, I said, well, that's the end of the story. So my wife is in Whole Foods, and I'm waiting for her in the car, and I get a call. She said, are you the guy that gave me that magnet? And he had a white pickup, and... He said, well, you know, after you gave me that magnet, I put it on my refrigerator. And right after you gave it to me, my life went into a downworld down world spiral. I beat up my girlfriend. Uh, here, six months ago, I got my fourth DUI. And I, I, was, on, I was on my, uh, I was in jail, and I was on the floor, and I got on my knees, and I remembered what you told me, that if I give my life 100% to Jesus, my life will change 100%. And he says, I got on my knees that night, and I gave my life to the Lord. And, you know, I had four DUIs, and I tried to get my real estate license, and they wouldn't give it to me because I had so many DUIs. But God opened a door, and I'm telling you, when God opens a door, and you draw an eye to God, and you, he draws an eye to you, your life will change. He said he'll never suffer the righteous. The Bible says in 13.5 in Hebrew, let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content. Be content with such things that you have, because God said he'll never leave you nor forsake you, that you, you and I might boldly say, the Lord is my helper. And the Lord was that young man's helper, and he got his real estate license. I'm going to tell one quick one that we, uh, several years ago, we took thousands of these uh, banners and magnets in Spanish down to Costa Rica, and we've got this little one right here. It's in Spanish. It says, The Los Diez Mandamientos, uh, Jesus Christos, El Camino, La Verdad y La Vida. These are five and a half by eight and a half. You can put them on your car. Anybody that will put any of these on your car, on the back of your truck, thousands of people a month, We'll see this. Jesus, all the names of Jesus. Uh, train up a child the way they should go. When they're old, they won't depart from it. You've got Jesus. 
the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and we have one with name above all names. We've got Yeshua, the name above all names. We've got Jesus, the name above all names. So what I'm saying, this young man uh, down in Costa Rica, we got there on a Saturday night, and Pastor Walter Garo, he's the head of Teen Challenge down in, in Costa Rica. So what we did, we gave him 100 of these. The next morning, we spoke in his church, and uh, didn't have a real good interpreter, but that was all right. He took a hundred of these. He went to a town called Desamparados in Costa Rica, and he handed one of these to a street vendor. Well, that's the end of the story, except God had different plans. Four days later, we went back to the mayor of Desamparados, and we wanted to put a banner in the park. She approved that, so we put a big banner in the park. As we're leaving in his van, his, in his uh, Teen Challenge van, where he had big magnets on each uh, three of them on each side of his vehicle and all of a sudden as we were leaving this guy comes up and starts talking to the pastor and he starts weeping i'm sitting next to him my wife took a picture of him and i had my interpreter and after about two minutes this guy's just big guy is just weeping and i said oscar what's the matter with him he said pastor walter gave him this magnet sunday sunday night and that night he was going to kill himself. And he said he read number six, no matares, thou shall not kill. And he started weeping and God spoke to him and said, now is not the time to end it. Now is the time to begin it. A couple days later, he saw a lady coming out of the bank and it happens everywhere in the world. And he was going to knock her down and steal her, steal her money. And he said he remembered number eight, thou shall not steal. I'm saying to you out there in the world, the people are hurting, but if you give your life to Jesus, your life will change. If you're thinking of suicide, get on your knees and repent, because the Bible says in 3 9, I tell you nay, except you repent, you're going to perish. There's something about repent. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. And when you repent and get back, you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and this is for you and your family. If you're hurting, Get on your knees and ask God to help you. He said he'll never suffer the righteous to be moved. He loves you. He's got a plan for you. He doesn't want you to take your life. He wants you to have life and life more abundantly and eternal life with his son, Jesus. So we want you to know whatever we do today, it's for the glory of God. Yes. We're only here but for a moment, then we vanisheth away. You know... As I go through my life and the things, I have went through the pornography thing. God has set me free. I've become dead in Christ to sin. I love Jesus. Now I want to honor him. I want to be like Jesus. He says, come unto me, all you labor in 11. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest to your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I've had so many burdens in my life. I said, I, Lord, I can't, I can't handle it anymore. I can't carry them. I would be walking around stooped over, and I said, Lord, i got to give them to you. And I got on my knees, and I repented. And I said, Lord, forgive me. And he said, forgive everybody from the bottom of your heart so you can be forgiven. And if you don't have peace and joy today, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, and peace you can find in the fifth chapter of Galatians. Love, joy, and peace, long-suffering and meekness, and joy and meekness and faith against there's no law. He loves you. Count it joy when you go through tribulation, it says in the fifth chapter of, uh, of, of Romans, because tribulation gives you patience, and patience experience, and experience gives you hope, which is in Christ Jesus. So Susie and I were going through this journey. I love my wife this much, and then I'd die for her. And so I really enjoy what she's done, Susie, in this journey. And would you like to say a couple things before we end this today? Yes, and it's, it's you know, it is God's word that gives us hope. Uh, you might say, well, why the Ten Commandments? Well, we know that the Ten Commandments is God's word, and it's we're not putting these up to condemn anyone. We're putting them up because just like just like us, it was God's Ten Commandments that brought us to Christ. It was the reason why we repented. We learned about our sin, and we, it, it brought us to Christ to realize that we weren't right with God. And that's why we're doing what we do now, because we know that, there, that the Word of God gives people hope. And in, in, those, in those testimonies that you've heard from Philip, people needed hope. People needed something to look to. 
And so uh, speaking of Costa Rica, we're doing more and exciting things now. Uh, so we started this in 2005, and God has grown this ministry to where we are now international, and we will be taking these banners, not only banners, but magnets and hats and God's word to the nations. We've also come back from the Navajo Nation, which we'll talk to you about next week or uh, the next uh, sure. segment. But uh, the new and exciting things that we're doing is with banners, with T-shirts, and we're going to be bringing this to you in our next show. So thank you very much for, for joining us today. Um, if you would like to get a hold of us, you can go to gods10.com. And dot net. And dot net. Uh, you can learn about the ministry. You can call us. Uh, you can uh, email us, and we would be happy to discuss with you. Um, if you'd like to get some of these for your churches, we have them available. We have uh, T-shirts such as which Philip is wearing right here, Trust Jesus. And uh, just give him a brief testimony about when you wore your T-shirt at the gym, how someone came up to you and was, was, had hope because they saw yeah, your well, T-shirt. I was in Clovis, California, and I put my T-shirt on. I'm walking around. I wear this shirt every day, and I've got a lot of them. If you're interested in some information on that, uh, you can go to pkmail at earthlink.net. That's pk, Paul, P, Paul, K, King, M-A-I-L at earthlink.net. Email me. Uh, you can call me at 702 702- 271-9288. That's 702-271-98 if you'd like more information. Uh, if you'd like to uh, have prayer, uh, wherever we're at, we'll get on our knees and we'll pray for you. But here we are. I'm walking around the gym and a guy sees my trust t-shirt. Says, are you the guy that had that trust t-shirt? Uh, t-shirt on a month ago. He says, I saw that t-shirt and I was going through a hard time because my, my, my daughter was in the hospital and it just reminded me that God is in charge and my hope is in him. He says, I want to thank you for wearing that. So anyway, we want you to know that there's hope. Again, contact us if you need prayer. Uh, we've got some mission trips coming up. If you'd like to join us, there's nothing better to go to some of these countries and share Jesus to a broken world and to put up his word. I'll tell you what, we just got back from Belize where we sent over 10,000 banners and magnets down. And if you're interested in some of these, email us at uh, pkmail at earthlink.net or give us a call, 702-271-9288. My name is Philip, and this is Susie. You can go to gods10.com or you can go to gods10.net. And if you'd like further information, but until we see you next time, our hope is to bring Jesus to a broken world and to the nation to know that in Jesus Christ there's hope. Anyway, we want to thank you for joining us. And until next time, God bless you, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you.